Hey pals, do you want to find out how you can get more Go With The Heat? Maybe even get a business card and a skinny tie? Find all this and more on our Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. We'd love to get your support. Even for as little as $1 a month, you can show your support for this little old indie podcast. Now enough of me, let's turn on that music. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're finally there. Season 4, Episode 1, titled Contempt of Court. It originally premiered on September 25th, 1987. It is written by Peter McCabe. Now, I have a theory here. Not knowing anything else that happens, we're going to find out throughout this season. But Peter McCabe... This is his first Miami Vice episode he wrote. He's got three more coming. I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that I'm going to say that a lot in season four, that this is the first episode they've written and that Dick Wolf turned over the entire writing crew between seasons three and four, which would also explain why episodes got weird in season four (laughs) and why we jumped the shark in season four (laughs) it makes sense that we got a new bunch of writers in the writer's room obviously we've just started in season four and i can already see some of the changes tubbs has a fantastic beard uh (laughs) crockett looks like husky david spade Right out of the gate, you're right, Sean. There's a lot of changes. And one is obviously the way the men look. We haven't seen the ladies. We saw Stan briefly twice. He looks the same. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. He hasn't changed. (laughs) (laughs) There's no change to the opening credits. There's a change to the end credits, though. There's a couple new scenes in the end credits. Not very excited about that. (laughs) Horsies in the the end credits. (laughs) But that beard melissa oh that beard is so nice (laughs) i love the tubs beard i think that i know this is gonna be it's controversial but i think the tubs looks really good with the beard and crockett looks really bad with the big hair and the big (laughs) shoulder pads so this season is a hard season for crockett his look takes a big big (laughs) kick on this one (laughs) all i know is with that hair that crockett he better be tipping his hairdresser very good yeah i mean a lot of work going into that from behind (laughs) there's one scene where he's looking out the window from behind he's got some big shoulder pads he's got that hair he looks like a middle-aged woman his uh, pants are also yeah. getting puffier. Yes, yeah, so they're getting puffier. And then he's wearing like like tank tops with print on them underneath. Like, the, I don't know, V-neck tank tops with print on them <laughs> underneath his jacket with his big puffy jacket, too. What's going on? This is not what's the, fashion. <laughs> what's with the bright salmon shirt under the white suit? I don't know. And his Crockett's fashion has always mystified me throughout the run of the show so far. Because Tubbs always looks clean. He's got a suit that fits him really nice. He always looks like really professional. Where everyone else's dress throughout the show is big, flamboyant, wildly different. You know, they, they it's way out there. And Tubbs is always very clean cut. The only one that is the same is Castillo or Switek, who just wears a Hawaiian shirt every day. Hey, not true. Sometimes Castillo wears a little bit of a wider tie. No, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I mean, in this episode, it looks like he's actually dressed for court. Crockett looks like he's going to a uh, George Michael lookalike contest. <laughs> he could win that, actually, in that suit. <laughs> Directed for Give Us Our Dits. He also has a couple more or one more episode coming. All right, John, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but I know it's not the best music in in a Vice episode. What do you got for us this week? Okay, so I start the season off on kind of a low note. Have you heard of the band Yellow? Vaguely sounds sounds familiar. Uh, Like maybe I heard it from you one time. (laughs) Maybe. Ah, we might have talked about them last season, episode three, Kill Shot. Today, <laughs> we will also be talking about them two more times. Don't worry if you don't know the band Yellow. You will. We, we, we have one, one song, and it's just by them. Yellow's Call It Love. As a reminder, the band Yellow was originally founded in 1979 by Boris Blank and Carlos Perón. Carlos and Boris would start the band in 79 and they would add Dieter Meyer on vocals in 1980 which was a good move because in 83 Carlos would leave for an attempted solo career leaving just Dieter and Boris as the band the entire band 
So they were a Swiss electronica techno pop band. They're a Swiss electro uh, electronica techno pop band. Because we're going to talk about them a couple more times, let's just talk about Dieter. Dieter Meyer was the uh, was on vocals, and he was also a performance artist as well as actually a myriad of other things that he would get into in into the nineties and two thousands. Let's start in seventy two. In nineteen seventy two. As part of an art display at a railway station in Kassel, Germany, Dieter would install a sign that read, that would read, On March 23rd, 1994, from 3 to 4 p.m., Dieter Meyer will stand on this plaque. And sure thing, 22 years later, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel obligated. I have to do that now. Like, I have to make one. I just had to remember yes. exactly where I put it. <laughs> just be, I just imagine sitting around one day and be like, oh, no. It's almost 4 I was supposed to be somewhere. It's today. Can you imagine if you're at this railway station in Germany on March 23rd, 94? You're sitting next to this sign that says that. And then all of a sudden, this old guy comes running in and climbs up and stands on the plaque. I'd push him over <laughs> and stand on it. <laughs> so, some more interesting facts about Dieter. In the 90s, Meyer continued his performance art and also designed silk scarves. He would also... Hey, if you're from Switzerland, scarves might be really uh, important to you. <laughs> um, so, but he would also get involved with a company called Rewatch. Rewatch recycled cans and would turn them into watches. So he's got like a mellow gold watch or something. <laughs> I can just picture it now. That that name is a yes. little on the nose. <laughs> so he, it, believe it or not, Yellow was still a band and actually still put out music through the 90s and into the 2000s, even though they didn't tour very much. After releasing two albums late in the 90s, Meyer bought 2,200 hectares land in Argentina. Yes, I said a hectare. <laughs> <laughs> this land, he would uh, open a ranch called uh, uh, no Ojo de Agua, which he would also use as the name of a restaurant and store that he would open in Zurich, where he actually currently lives. That store would sell wine, meat, corn, and soy-based products. I I get this feeling like this man is willing to do anything, including if he was to make a plaque <laughs> inside of a train station yes. and go stand on it. <laughs> There's some fun, interesting facts about Dieter. Talking about Yellow, we will talk maybe about Boris Blank next time. Carlos, maybe even Carlos. Um, <laughs> you know, it depends on if Boris is boring. I don't know if he stood on any plaques either. <laughs> and, and just in case you want to know why the band Yellow was relevant, well, well, their biggest hit, Oh Yeah, was featured in a number of movies and television shows, including Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the movie Something Wild, a South Park episode entitled Hell on Earth 2006. <laughs> so, there's your music. Excuse me, I have a plaque to make. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually some more to this music segment than I was anticipating, because I saw Yellow, and I'm like, like, oh. Well, we had to yeah. talk about something. <laughs> Only and also yeah. only one song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. As we mentioned, it's a, I, th I think it's a strong start to season four, but I'm really interested to see what everyone else thinks. Let's go talk about our final thoughts here. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Tweet at us, twitter.com slash go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat. You can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat. We would love your support. We're working hard on this show. We have a lot of plans for the future, so go check that out if you haven't had a chance to do so. Be sure to check out the website, go with the heat.com. Click on support. You can find all the other ways to support us, including leaving a review on your podcatcher platform of choice or contacting us because we'd love to hear from you. While you're there on that website, you can also click on subscribe and find all the ways you can subscribe to the show. Google Music, iTunes, TuneIn, YouTube. And I've been trying to get us on one of them smart speakers there. I'm not going to send any triggers. 
But you know those little hockey puck things you got sitting in your kitchen? I'm working <laughs> on trying to get this thing to work there, too. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all now. next time.